All right, not having any chat about Blackburn relegation on this channel this week. It's just not happening. Blackburn will go to Leicester. They might lose, but they're not going down. Let's check on that view uh, with uh, with Mr. Positivity himself, Harry, our Blackburn fan. <laughs> How are you, Harry? Final day, final time you have to talk about Blackburn. and You can have a rest, I promise. How are you? One more, one more, and it's over. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not as confident as you are, but just negative, negativity as it's been for the past sort of six months or so. Um, it would just be, like I've, I think I've said the phrase, it would be so Blackburn so many times over the times I've been on here. Um, I mean, fingers crossed, it's not us, but I could see it happening. Okay, let's um, let's have a chat about that Coventry game then, first of all, and then we'll have a look to the to the Leicester one. Um, so the Coventry fan on the channel earlier said that Coventry gave you four or five chances to put it in the back of the net. Uh, you took none of them and therefore rightly left with a point. Um, you disagree with any of that view? No, not really. Well, I, to be fair, I thought we were we were pretty good. Uh, we not the ball about really, but I mean, Coventry were probably knackered. They did seem knackered really late on. Uh, but we knocked the ball around pretty well. We played some decent stuff at times. Uh, I mean, we definitely should have scored maybe three or four. Uh, you, Sammy Smollix is Mr. Reliable, but he missed an open goal from two yards out in the first sort of 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then when, the, when they went down to 10 men, um, it was just one-way traffic from us. We couldn't stick the ball in the back of that. Although I think it was silly for him to make that challenge to go down to 10 men because it was Sam Gallagher threw on goal. And you, if, if anyone knows his goal record, he's not, <laughs> he's not going to stick it in the back of the net. Um, but yeah, we were we were good. Uh, hopefully we can take that kind of performance into Leicester, sort of take the game to Leicester a little bit. Um, but yeah, need to needed to find a goal from somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... We can't lose Blackburn from this league. I'm sorry. We can't have Blackburn Rovers in league in League One. Not with Burnley possibly coming down as well and making that interesting next year. Well, um, if we'd have put that game to bed, that wouldn't even be a conversation we'd need to absolutely. be having. We'd know we were absolutely here. So we're we're here because we've put ourselves here. We're not here because we're unlucky. We if we go down, we've gone down because we've deserved to go down. Uh it's been a miserable old year. Um, but hopefully we can just get over the line on the last game. Okay. All right, let's give Rovers fans some hope then. So we spoke to Birmingham and Norwich. Norwich are not going to be resting any players. They're going to try to keep that momentum. And Birmingham has said we're hopeless against Huddersfield. The prediction is a draw. That will help. That's fine. Plymouth and Hull. Hull were amazing against Ipswich. Plymouth were terrible against Millwall. That game is going to end in a Hull win, almost certainty. Sunderland fans said Sunderland have been terrible. Sheffield Wednesday will probably win that game. And it really doesn't then matter after that because Plymouth are not beating Hull, Birmingham are not beating Norwich, and potentially even Sheffield Wednesday aren't beating Sunderland. So any one of those combinations um, just keeps you safe, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's you know how dangerous it is to predict the championship. You know, I mean, I've got I've got a lot of mates that are Birmingham City fans, and they've been escaping by the skin of their teeth for the past decade. Uh, I remember Paul Caddis nick him on him must have been seven or eight years ago. Yeah, um, and they sent us down as well. Uh, so I could I could so see Birmingham beating uh, Norwich. Plymouth have been good at home every now and then, so I could see them beating Hull, to be honest. And I think Sheffield Wednesday will definitely beat Sunderland. Sunderland have been on the beach since about Christmas, I think. Um, well, so, been, yeah. so a, point would, a point would keep, still keep you safe, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, Birmingham yeah well, as we... Goal. As we record this, Leicester are just about to be crowned champions by the looks of things. So, who knows if they don't give a <laughs> they don't give a hoot about the game? They might just not even try. But I also feel it does work the other way. If you've got a team that's got nothing to play for, they play with a bit of freedom. They try things that they wouldn't necessarily try. Uh, I remember my dad telling me about a time that we were playing Man United and they just won the league and they were just trying. So, like stuff they would never try, and they would just—they absolutely pummeled us. So, if they play with that freedom, it could be a, a bad game for Rovers. But if they go sort of, you know, minds on the beach, focusing on next season already, maybe we could get a point if we play if we put in a similar performance that we did against Leeds. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not going to say we're safe because I don't think we are at all. But you know, I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed at one of those teams. I mean, I'll be I'll be trying to look, focus on those three fixtures more than focusing on our game, just hoping that one of those three teams lose. 
I can't. I can't see Plymouth beating Hull. I think. I think Plymouth are going down myself personally. I'm going to get you drag you on here next week, just deliberately, just to say the words Blackburn are safe, and you to agree with me because that would feel like that that would be a bit. That would be. (laughs) Okay. Um, All right. Before we let you finish then for the season, just to wrap things up, let's talk about Eustace and on what he needs. Uh, next season first of all investment um i don't want to talk too much about venkies because that will get you going but um what, do we know how much is it is it just the sale of smodics that he's going to be al- allowed to use or do you think there's going to be is a, a kitty for him well i'm not even sure if it'll be that we know how much sort of debt we've got uh we're said so we're looking for no less than 20 for smodics i think uh, we'll also get a sell-on clause for when David Raya goes few, through to Arsenal. I think that's about four million odd. And if uh, if Man City fancy chucking a hundred million at Adam Wharton after his uh, brilliant six months at Crystal Palace, we've got a nice little sell-on clause and that. So I mean, there is potential for money to be there. Uh, it's annoying one again that we're going to end up with a few players leaving for free. I think Dolan and Gallagher will both go without us getting a penny for them, which has happened a few times, which is one of the reasons we're in this situation, really. Well, one amongst many. Um, but there might be a bit of money there. We do always tend to, uh, you got to give the Venkies do got to give you some credit that they do keep investing when they are losing and losing money from us every single year. They keep putting money in. Um, so, Hopefully there is a bit of money to spend with, but I wouldn't imagine there would be all that much. Okay. Um, it is the final away day of a game of the season. So last week we asked you for your favourite home game. This time we're going to ask you for your favourite away trip. I mean, you've done a fair few, to be fair, and we know Blackburn don't travel in big numbers, but to be fair to you, mate, you've you've, you've done a fair big few journeys this season. Um, what's been your favourite away day? Well, I think I don't. We have, we've not won that many. I think I remember there's two at the top of my head that I remember as winning. Uh, the best one's got to be Leeds. Le- Leeds, after, especially after the pummeling from Bristol a uh, few days before, went with no expectations. They were just on their 15 game unbeaten run or whatever it was. Hadn't lost at home all season, and little old Rovers go there and and snatch it from them at the death. Though uh, that away end, those limbs were the best I'd had in a long time. That felt like a lot of frustration off everyone's shoulders after what had been a, well, a, a real difficult year on the road for Rovers. That goal, when that went in, that felt that felt monumental. Uh, so, yeah, it would definitely be that one. Okay, cool. Um, it has been a monumental season for Blackburn. Um, I, I just want to personally say thank you to you for coming here every single week. Um, we've got two different managers. We've had... FA Cup runs. Um, we've had um, we've had a lot of ups and ups and downs, and there's no way that the team with the highest goal scorer can can be relegated. That just this never happened. Um, and also, a team on fifty points can't be can't be relegated either. That's never happened as well. So um, let's uh, let's stay positive, shall we? Um, can Blackburn be a force next year? And if they if they are, what's needed? Well, if we're talking, if if Rovers do end up in the Championship next season, then we're going to sort. I think we're hoping to see a, a bit more solidarity, probably push towards mid table. I think this year has been a real backward step after what had been three years of solid progression, getting up around close to the playoffs. Um, it's been a real backward step this year. We 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 started to become a team that. Uh, re- re- recruiting well, bringing in a nice few loan players. Loan players wanted to play for us because the style of football and the development of those players uh, that we we were able to offer them. I think it's been a real backward step this year. I'm not sure we'll have that same sort of opportunity next year to bring in uh, quality players. Uh, Sam Smodics, I don't know how we're going to replace him. Um, so I'd like to say that next season might just be a solid building year, finish around mid-table, a bit like Sunderland on the beach by about February, uh, fingers crossed. But I could all, but I could see us being down here again. Uh, it, I think it's going to be a difficult preseason for John Euston. A preseason that he's, that he's needed. He needs that time to sort of, if he wants to play the style of football he wants to play, he needs that preseason to implement that because he's sort of been going to and from it every now and then, and it's not been working. Um, so let's let's not be too negative. Let's be let's be positive for once. Uh, pre-season 
get some get get try and get replace the squad and we'll go for a solid building year and finish around mid table. Amazing. Cool. Well, we'll all be here to see it because Blackburn ain't going anywhere. And I won't put my mortgage on it. <laughs> right. I'll take that bet. <laughs> uh, cheers, Harry. Thank you for all your contributions this year. Thank you, every Blackburn Rivers fan that's commented on videos in the past. We'll do this all over again uh, next uh, next year. And we are live on this Saturday on Toast Talk. Um, hopefully Harry and some of those fans can drop in and just say ah yeah, we're safe we can we can move on and put the season to bed thank you Harry good luck against Leicester enjoy their party as well another time you've watched that cham- another championship trophy being lifted into the air um, but yeah we'll see you see you in a couple of weeks been a pleasure mate nice one